So my goal for today really is to is to make sure that we've got our lives in order in order to get our business done. Now, can I get your life in order? No, I can't. That's really up to you, right? All of that stuff is kind of up to you. It's not up to me. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's only up to, to yourself and where your business is, right? So let's just get it started, right? Let's get started here real quick. So I want to repassionize a desire for you. You got into this business, whether you've been in this business for a year or 25 years, you got in this business with a desire. Now let's get it rocking and rolling. If you've been in for a day, this is a way for you to get rolling with your business and to understand which way to turn and which way to go. We're gonna talk a little mindset. We're gonna talk a little bit of getting started. We're gonna talk about a few things. And I promise it's not gonna be that long of a, of a presentation. So. I want you to look at everything this way. And some of you may have heard these three questions before. And these are questions you need to look at yourself. Look, look, the, ask yourself, excuse me. And this is all about, you know, all about handling fear, handling trepidations, handling things that you worry about. This is life, this is business. Just think about it. If you make that phone call, if you knock on that door, which I'm not saying knock on doors because I've never been a proponent of that, but whatever you're going to do in this business, what's the worst that could happen? What's the best that could happen? But really what's likely to happen, right? So prospecting is the most important thing that you are going to do in this business. You need to generate business. If you want to sit away, you know, it used to be, you know, the old brokerage style, the brokerage models that don't work anymore, they have uptime or floor time or that kind of thing. How much does that phone ring? If you want to sit in an office and wait for the phone to ring, you know what? Better off waiting for your phone to ring in your pocket because it's got a better chance of ringing. That is if you're doing the work. If you're doing the work and doing the prospecting, doing the posting, putting everything together through your sphere of influence, through the seven pillars, et cetera, the best thing that could happen is that you're doing a deal a day. The worst thing that can happen is what's happening this minute. You've got nothing happening. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But at this minute, I know watching this, you've got nothing happening. This minute, you did not get a deal. That's the worst that could happen. What's likely to happen, whatever you put into the business, it's going to come out. I swear to you that will happen. Now, if you're doing things the wrong way, and doing things like you think they should be done without the proper training, upskilling, or coaching, it's not going to happen. Wait a minute. It might happen by luck. The worst thing that could happen there is that nothing happens. The best thing that could happen is you might get lucky with a deal or two. Some people get lucky to 15 to 20 deals a year because they have a couple of past clients that they actually talk to, but they don't talk to anybody else. What's likely to happen? Not much in that instance. But here's the point. I want you to look at all of your chores and all of your work that you need to do in the real estate business this way, whether it's prospecting, calling for sale by owners, expires, withdrawals, doing social media, going live on social media for that matter. What's the worst that could happen? What's your overview, right? So you got into this business for a reason. So what was the desires that you had? First slide, I said, I want to repassionize your desires, right? So, so why did you want to do this? And when you ask yourself, why did you want to do this? I'm going to ask you, why did you come up with that why? And why, and why, and why, and why? I want to go deep. I'd love to have a one-on-one -on -one with each and every one of you that watch this, 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 um, this training to really help you understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. Because a lot of us really don't. They don't understand why we're doing this business and not have a nine to five J-O-B, right? What are your needs? That's more important than your wants, right? Because when we talk about talking with a buyer, or we're talking with a seller, we talk about their wants and needs, right? What we think they need, I'm going to tell you, they really don't care too much about. So by doing our job and asking questions more than making statements, we're going to be able to understand what their needs are as well as what they want. Well, I want a three bedroom, three bath house, but I can only afford a three bedroom, one bath house, or I want a, I want an acre of land, but you can only afford a house on a 50 by hundred lot. 
those are extremes, but I'm just telling you needs and wants are, can be completely different things. Discipline. Are you disciplined? Are you understanding the manner of what you need to do and will you get it done? What does discipline mean? It's another word for doing what you got to do. Are you disciplined to get the work done? You know, or will you be disciplined by a feeling of regret? Listen to this. The feeling of discipline, the pain of discipline is far better than that feeling of regret for not doing the work. You know, you might need to make a certain number amount of money every month. And it might take just one transaction to get you to there so you don't have to worry anymore. How about this? If you need one transaction a month or two transactions a month or three transactions a month, how about taking that first week every month and bust your ass to get it done all in the first week? That makes a lot of sense. If you could discipline yourself to do that, geez, you got three, you got three transactions the first week of the month and the rest of the three weeks, you can just like, you know, do admin work. You can go play golf or go to the beach but still have your phone on you, of course, to make sure you answer questions. What problems do you see? Now, this is a really large open question because the title of the slide is what's your overview, right? What problems do you see for you? Some of us have problems with our closest friends and family not understanding what we're doing and they want to, they, they don't understand you. You see, your closest friends and family do not know how to support you, right? Some of them might be skeptical. They might even be cynical. And to you, it's insulting and hurtful. You need to have the discipline to say, hey, cut the crap. This is what I'm doing. Now, mostly all of us will have the support of our family and friends. We just need to make sure that we're looking in through their eyes as well and understand what their needs are as well when it comes to us. Look, there's three things you have to look at when you look at your processes. What's the most important thing in the world? I'm gonna give you three choices. You do not have to answer, I will answer for you. The first one, the, the three choices are you, your family, or your business. Those are your three choices. What's most important? You, your family, or your business? What's number one? What's number two? What's number three? Number one is you, not your family, not your business. Why? Because if you're not there, if you're not present, if you're not showing up, it's going to be difficult for you to have the time with your family, for you to have the sanctity of that life with your family, to have that lifestyle with your family, to be able to do the business you need to do. You are number one. If you don't love yourself, start thinking why. If you do, go for everything you got because you care enough about yourself to care about everybody else. This is all about what the problems you see in your way, in your way, it's in through your eyes. Understand that everybody sees things differently. Not everyone is going to see you the same way that you see you. Everyone will see you differently. If you went to the movies and it was a story of the story of your life as told by you, it's going to be different than the story of your life as told by your parents or by your friend or by you know, your colleague, it's going to look differently, right? So the way you see them really is what's important. However, understand that they see you differently. They don't see you saying, I can't do this. Don't do that. Get rid of the negative talk. I want you to look at it and say, instead of I can't do this, I am working to get better at doing this. I am getting better at this. That's how you look at it. Time, time's our friend, right? What, to, what is today in time for you? And what I mean by that is, is today the beginning of what you're doing? Is it the beginning of your year? Is it three months into the year? Is it a month into the year? Is it a month into your plan? Is it two months into your plan? Is time a wasting for you? 
Are you six months halfway through your plan? What is it? If you just started putting pen to paper to put your, put your plan together, great. If you're two months into it and you need to look at what you're tracking, you need to know those numbers. You need to know what you've done and why you've done it and where you're at. And then better yet, what are you going to get done today? Is your time written out? Do you have a true schedule that you're going to stick to today, yesterday, last week, next month? Are you going to stick to your schedule? Are you going to set up a non-negotiable time blocking schedule for you to be able to get it done? These are all questions that should be the answer. Most of these should be yes. What is today in time for you? What will you accomplish? What you will you accomplish today? What did you accomplish yesterday? Was it a good enough day to say it was a victory or that it was a that it was an A plus? Some of us like to grade our days, right? I had an A plus day, I had a B minus day, I had a C day. And when you don't get anything but an A plus, at the end of the day, I want you to ask yourself what your grade was. And if it's less than an A plus, ask yourself. What would have made it an A plus? If you give yourself a C, you need to figure out why it was a C and not an A plus. So here's a way to do it, a way to help you see what kind of day you had. Every day starts with a bunch of commitments. One of my favorite words, if you didn't know that already. Every day starts with a bunch of commitments. And what you ask yourself at the end of the day is, have I fulfilled my commitments for the day? Second question is, if I did not fulfill my commitments for the day, what got in my way? Third question is, for all intents and purposes, could I have fulfilled my commitments? And the last question is, the fourth question, what will I do differently tomorrow so I can achieve my commitments? You need to ask these questions of yourself every day and then grade yourself and say why you could have done better. I do it every day. And lastly, on this slide, how good of a boss are you? And why does I, in, in the same slide with time, it actually should be on every slide. It should be the footnote. How good of a boss are you? I'm not talking about the boss of others. I'm talking about the boss of the person in the mirror. Because if you suck as a boss, you're not going to do a good job with the schedule. So you need to upgrade your time, upgrade your day, upgrade your, your bossness, and be rock solid in what you expect of yourself. So you need to inspect yourself as a boss would inspect you. Are you showing up? Did you show up on time? Did you work eight to 11 prospecting? Did you take that time off that you scheduled for yourself? Look, that's also really important is time for yourself. Remember I said you were more important than family and, and, and business. It's not that you're more important. It's just that you yourself, you need to give yourself a break. And that also shows how to be a good boss. Where are you today with respect to the goals you thought about this year, last year, for the next 12 months? Where are you? So if you are in a year that you're in the month of March or in the month of June, and you set goals for the year, you need to look back and say, where am I today with that goal? Have I been disciplined in my days and my weeks and disciplined at my job? Am I doing the work? Am I showing up? Am I being intentional when I do show up? Or am I just playing on Facebook? Am I just going on social media? Am I more concerned about one thing or another? Do I get distracted? How do I get the distractions out of my head? That's not hard. I tell you, it's really not. They're squirrels and I know how to exterminate them. I know how to cut them out of your life. Distractions will cause you money. It has to do with not being disciplined or not being disciplined enough. So ask yourself, where are you with respect to the goals you thought about for this year? Okay, let me ask you another question that should be here and that question should be rewritten. Where are you with respect to the goals you wrote down for this year? Where are you with respect for the goals you wrote down in your five-year plan, three-year plan? What's your discipline? Will anything stop you? 
So I want you to be aware of some things and you see them all right here, right? These are distractions. These are things that will sidetrack you. What is FOMO? Fear of missing out. That's the one. That's one of them, right? Fear of missing out, which means, oh, geez, I, I better go with this guy over here and help him that. Or, or I better do that system. Or, or, or maybe I should pay Zillow thousands of dollars because that's what they're doing. Or, or maybe I should post, hey, look, if you're looking for referrals, call me and I should post that on Facebook. Wrong. If you want to copy somebody, go ahead but make sure you copy everything. Find out what their research was. Go deep. Find out where they started dealing with what they were going to do. Don't just copy the surface. Tony Robbins says, Anthony Robbins says, if you want to have success, find someone that's successful and copy it, but copy everything. Just not one thing. Imposter syndrome. That you feel you're not good enough when you're doing something. Like you're doing a listing presentation. He says, what am I doing? Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Why am I here? Well, you got the appointment. One way or the other, you got the appointment. Comparisitis. Don't compare yourself to anybody else. If you're looking at what you're doing and you've got a plan and you understand a plan, put the blinders on. Put the blinders on. Don't look side to side. If you've got all kinds of agents crap coming into your email or coaches stuff coming into your email, you can set a rule where it automatically goes to a folder or a label in Gmail, automatically. I had to do that six months ago. And guess what? It was so liberating. I know if this stuff, if I want to look at it, it's all there for me. It's all there for me. It does not get in my way. It doesn't sideline me. I must have gotten back at least 30 minutes a day just from doing that. Perfectionism. Hey, you know what? As my buddy Sekou Pyle says, shipping versus perfection. What does that mean? Well, if you're familiar with Windows, whenever they come out with a new one, they just send it out. They've got a release date and that's the date it goes. And then the next one is, the, is that one fixed. Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, whatever it was that was a long time ago, these are things that were never correct. They're going to ship it before it's perfect because if they keep waiting to have it perfect, they'll never do it. So that's one of the things you need to be aware of. Oh, it's not perfect yet. Screw perfection. Look, the imperfection is the connection. The imperfection is the connection. Analysis paralysis. I've heard this from, for geez, for all of my business career. Analysis paralysis. Well, when you're buying a building, you're buying an investment property, you really need to do the analysis. And here's the interesting thing. The numbers aren't going to change. So once you analyze the numbers and you come up with, I, with a thought, it's not going to change unless you made a mistake. So, okay, I could see doing that process two or three times, but that's it. It's the same thing with your, with your buyer presentation, your listing presentation. But here's the thing. You need to memorize it. You need to work on your scripts. That is not analysis paralysis. That is practice, completely different. And then there's the disease to please. You're always looking to please somebody else. You're always looking to do it. Well, you know what? I'll get to that, but I got to do this for them. Or I'll do this for them, or I'll do this, or I'll do that. You got to stop that. Here's some things to do, right? I talked about copying someone else, but you, if you're going to copy someone else, you need to look at their work and you need to know the exact plan and know their instructions on how they finally figured it out. Because let's face it, if someone's doing something and it's working, you're only seeing the tip of the iceberg, right? That's all you are seeing. You're not seeing all the failure and all the sweat that went into it. And if they're good enough to show you what they did, they'll have it down pat and it'll tell you what to look out for. You cannot copy someone by looking over their shoulder. You just cannot. Now, in the right company, they're gonna share with you anything they've got. You want something I got? It's yours. By being in my programs, you have access to anything and everything I have and always will except for masterminds. Anything I got is yours free. Stuff I sell for hundreds and thousands of dollars is yours free. 
forever. Mostly you need to believe in yourself and be confident. You need to believe in yourself that you can do this. You took the big leap and if you had a full-time job and you're in this now, guess what? You believe in yourself, whether you believe it or not. Confidence, there we go. Clarity. Being clear on what you're doing and why, as we talked about before. Connection. Always be connecting with people because the difference between a contact and a contract is that R. Relationships. Creation. These are your action steps, right? Whenever you do anything, whether you fail or you, you succeed, it's a celebration. And be very clear. You never lose here. You either win or you learn. Learn by everything that's happening. And then there's commitment. Let's get into commitment a little deeper than that. So there's four C's of commitment. There's commitment down to courage, to get the capability, and to get confidence. And we want to be confident, right? That's what we're talking about. So the four C's formula. So say our goal and our breakthrough goal is 24 transactions or more, right? That's two transactions a month. What do you got to do? Well, <clears throat> you've got to commit to the work. Lead generation, that's prospecting. Follow-up, relentless. You got to do whatever it takes. That's the commitment. That is absolutely the commitment. And what I want to show you is and tell you is you need to be so committed to what's best for your heart that you're willing to sit through the most uncomfortable pain of growth that you refuse to accept anything else but alignment, love, and success. Then we get the courage. Oh, geez, I got to do this myself? I never had to rely on myself before. Someone always told me what to do. What are people going to think? I'm going to sound like an idiot. I'm so stupid. Oh, I can't do that. I hate the, I, 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 I suck at technology. Stop that crap. Cut it around. I'm going to do this myself. I am doing this myself. I rely on myself. I got the information and did the work to figure this out. I want to hear people's reaction to what I do. I am intelligent. I know what I'm doing. I look great on camera. When you do that and change that around, you've now got courage. You're doing it. You've committed to doing this. You got no choice. You got no choice. It's like when you get on the roller coaster and it starts, you got no choice but to get to the end of it. It's the same with Tower of Terror. You've got to fall down that elevator. You got no choice. It gives you the capability to do it, or maybe you pass out. I don't know. You're gonna have you're gonna have to be able to figure out how to do it. And the big things that we've talked about a little bit today are structure, ritual, time blocking. These are non-negotiable things you need to have in your business in order to build it. We talked about friends and family support. Your results are going to happen from this work. Trust me. Believe in yourself. Look in the mirror and say, yep, I got this to do today. But mostly the capability of being coachable. You've got the courage to do it and you've got the guts to say and raise your hand and say, I need help. Maybe you need more training. Maybe you need to be upskilled. Maybe you need to repassionize your desires. When you reach that confidence, your coaching keeps you going. It keeps you moving in the right direction. 24 transactions, ha! How about 50 transactions? Support and accountability to your why. That's important. Look, you can't be accountable to me. I can't be accountable to you. You can't be accountable to a human being. You have to be accountable to your why, to your family. And that's the group not the individual. More success, more goals. Motivation is going to be present all the time and you're not gonna have an issue with it at all. You're gonna be motivated. Time is your friend, as I said earlier. So I got an exercise for you for today. I want you to do the 168 exercise. If you don't have a pad of paper in front of you, get one. I want you to write down the number one. 68 on top of the page. I'll wait for a sec. So you write 168. If you know what the number 168 stands for, great. 
If you don't, I'm going to tell you. 168 is the number of hours in a week. The great thing about the week is there's seven days in it. And every day we get a new 24. If you're not, if you're an NBA fan, a basketball fan, you notice that they have the 24 second clock. And every time the ball hits the rim, a new 24, a new 24 seconds. Well, every day you're lucky. You wake up, you get a new 24 seconds. You get a new 24 hours. How are you going to use that 24 hours? So let's look at it this way. How have you used the last 24 hours? Or how have you used typically in a week, the 168? So I want you to write down on that piece of paper, how many hours a day times seven that you typically sleep, that you eat, that you goof off, that you work, that you play with the kids, family time. I'm gonna tell you that when you add this up, it will not equal 168. It will equal less, which tells you the most important thing. Don't ever tell me you don't have time. When you tell me you don't have time, it means you don't want to. That's what it means. You tell someone you don't have time, it means you don't want to. I have not used that phrase in years. I don't have time. I'm going to figure out how to get it done. So in a real estate skill builder process, there are four pieces to this differentiator formula. One is the art of differentiation, the seven pillars, being prepared in virtualness. 